But you might say David's singing and dancing was a reflection of his generosity. He's free to worship God, knowing that God is the source of his supply. So when David gave, he gave over $2 billion to the work of God. And he literally said, this generosity will literally affect the next generation. So you could say your generosity will go to the next generation and to the next generation. It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. We're going to teach on the subject of generosity. Generosity, huh? And uh, generosity is important to God. It's important to God. Matter of fact, God Himself is extravagantly generous. Amen. I like to say, God is the biggest giver, He's extravagantly generous. And uh, in his generosity, he gives his mercy. He's rich in mercy, new mercies every morning. Rich in grace. His grace is abundant, far exceeds our sin and anything that has ever happened to us. He's rich in grace, generous in his grace. Amen? And he's generous in every area. And our generosity is a revelation of our understanding of God's generosity. All right, let's try that one more time. I said our personal generosity is simply a demonstration or revelation of our understanding of God's generosity. Amen. Someone said it this way, like a mother smiles her baby into smiling. In other words, you cannot slap a baby happy. Don't look around right now. Some of you may have tried it. <laughs> but like a mother smiles her baby into smiling. Isn't that one of the most beautiful things? Uh, a child, you can see the mother smiling and that baby smiling, you know. Like a mother smiles her baby into smiling, God loves us into loving. And he gives us into giving. Amen. Amen. So when you talk about generosity, I know that a lot of times people think they're generous until they run into somebody that's generous. Right. Right. Amen. And of course, the opposite of generous, you could say would be ungenerous or would to be stingy. You don't want that on your tombstone. Here lies stingy. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I found that most people don't care how holy you are or how talented you are if you're stingy. So generosity literally is a characteristic of God in every area. This morning we're going to talk about generosity in a very important area concerning your finances and concerning giving. Actually, if you'll study the Bible, there's over 2,000 scriptures that mention the word give. About 500 that mention the word faith. About 500 that mention the word prayer. But over 2,000 that talk about finances in relation to giving. We know that one of the passages of Jesus in Luke chapter 16, he said, if you're faithful in the area of money, that God will commit to you true riches. All right, let's try that again. I said, if you're faithful, this is Jesus. Y'all have heard of him, haven't you? Amen. All right, Luke 16, Jesus said, if you're faithful when it comes to money, God will commit to you yes. true riches. Yes. In other words, money is really not true riches. Amen. Nice to have money, but true riches are things that are much better than money. 
which are wisdom and revelation knowledge and eternal life and the goodness of God and your family. Come on, the things that are much better than money. But the Lord said to me, if you'll be a generous giver, I'll do things for you that money cannot do. Or you could say it this way. Jesus said, you and I as Christians, if we can pass the money test. Y'all still here? In other words, your generosity is a reflection of your heart. Actually, Jesus said that's where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. So it's not, a, it's not a minor subject with Jesus, or a minor subject in the Bible concerning generosity. Some of the most outstanding generosity chapters, one of my favorite is 1 Chronicles 29. The whole chapter is about the psalmist David's generosity. The whole chapter. God's literally got whole chapters about generous giving. Whole chapters. Not just an isolated verse somewhere. We're reading a whole chapter where it came time to do something and build the house of God. And it says that David said, I have prepared with all of my might for the house of God. I set my affection on the house of God. He said, I'm going to give over and above everything I've ever given before for the house of God. Then David told how much he gave. Actually, someone said that David is the first declared steward in the Bible. Declared means he told how much he gave, and then he turned to his mighty men and said, no pressure, what y'all going to do? <laughs> in other words, David told how much he gave for one reason, because you can't lead people in generosity if you're not generous. There'll be a little bit of chicken in your voice. If you're trying to get people to do stuff you don't do, right? So uh, David's generosity, he told how much he gave. In today's dollars, I counted up years ago, and David's giving was approximately one and a half billion dollars. And you couldn't write a check, you understand? He brought wagons of gold and silver for the house of God. And so one and a half billion dollars, he turned to his mighty men and said, uh, what y'all want to do? <laughs> And you were saying, oh, I was wanting to go sing in the choir. So, <laughs> so I like to say it this way, <laughs> that a lot of people want to sing like David sang. And there's even some that want to dance like David danced. There are just not too many that want to give like David gave. But you might say David's singing and dancing was a reflection of his generosity. He's free to worship God, knowing that God is the source of his supply. So when David gave, he gave over $2 billion to the work of God. And he literally said, this generosity will literally affect the next generation. So you could say your generosity will go to the next generation and to the next generation. I'm here today, and I preach in countries all over the world, but I'm here not just because of what I do. Actually, my grandfather was the first Hankins that was born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, and called to preach, my grandfather. And he pioneered churches in East Texas, and what we, by our standards, we would say he was very poor. But my grandfather pioneered churches, and people actually didn't have money. They actually brought, you know, uh, chickens and brought corn and brought their crops in. And so he's pioneering the church. And my daddy told me the story that my grandpa's car broke down. Old, broken down car. He had to kind of walk to town, walk around, knocking on doors and preaching. And his car broke down. Well, he couldn't get a loan, you know, so he just started saving up money. And he saved up maybe, a, you know, two or three hundred dollars. And he had some money saved up to get a, a car. Not a new car, but a better car. One that ran <laughs> and stopped. So... <laughs> If you have a car that won't run, you got a problem. But if you got a car that won't stop, you really got a problem. So, um, so he had some money saved up, and a missionary to Africa came and preached at my grandpa's church. And so my grandpa took the money that he had saved up for the car and gave it to missions. Oh, now you think that's really great. But my dad said my grandma was mad at him. She was so mad that she wouldn't talk to him for days. We have no transportation. You gave the money 
that was for our car, and you gave it to this missionary to Africa, and so she was mad, the kids were mad, and so they treated him real quiet. <laughs> he got the quiet treatment. But my dad said it wasn't too long after that, maybe just a few days or a few weeks, he said that somebody came and gave my grandpa a better car than he ever could have bought. So everybody's happy again. But the bigger part of the story is my grandfather loved preaching the gospel and he loved world missions. But my grandfather never preached outside of the state of Texas. I am his grandson. Amen. Let's try that again. I am, I'm sorry, I didn't know that's going to happen, but I'm his grandson. And I preach all over the world. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And so your generosity literally will affect your children and your grandchildren. Amen. Even after your funeral, your generosity will still be speaking Amen. and still be a blessing. So David's generosity, he said, literally will bless the next generation and the next generation. He was a man after God's own heart, and his heart was reflected in his generosity to the work of God. Amen. Amen. He turned to his mighty men and said, what y'all going to do? He gave two billion. No pressure. <laughs> well, the Bible says that his mighty men who came to David distressed, discontent, and in debt. That's how they came to him. His mighty men began to give, and his mighty men gave over two and a half billion dollars. Just in what we figured up in today's dollars. And so he had 400 mighty men, so they must have been given 10 million, 20 million dollars apiece. Well, I would say they must have gotten out of debt. <laughs> How many know that dis distress, discontent, and in debt usually hang out together? But did you know your covenant with God can radically change your whole life? And when they came to David, they caught the same spirit of faith and hanging out with David and his, his love for God and the presence of God. Listen, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. God is not opposed to you being abundantly provided for. I said, God is not opposed to you being abundantly provided for. God's not opposed to you being rich, actually. The blessing of the Lord makes you rich. Amen? Hallelujah. And so in this area of generosity, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, I'll go back to uh, 2 Corinthians 9 just a second. But 1, Corinthians, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, here's what it says. Paul told Timothy to charge those that are rich in this world. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Charge those that are rich in this world. Excuse me, I do have notes, but I always say I preach like a fat man caught in a barbed wire fence. <laughs> it's a point here and a point there. So, <laughs> y'all apparently never been deer hunting and got caught in a barbed wire fence. So... <laughs> So I got another point. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. Paul told Timothy, which is really the Spirit of God talking, and he said, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. All right, let's read that one more time. You ready? Paul told Timothy, in other words, Timothy was a pastor, and so he told Timothy, talk to the people in your church. He said, and talk specifically to the rich people. Yeah. Well, we want to avoid that, don't we? Yeah. But Paul told Timothy, talk to the rich people. And when I read that, I thought, wow, well, that means you're supposed to be rich people at church. 
Well, when I read that, I volunteered for the program. So I wanted to find out <laughs> if there's supposed to be rich people at church, I'd like to sign up. So he said, talk to the rich people because with that abundance comes a responsibility. So he says, tell those that are rich in this world, what do you want to tell them? Well, uh, he says, charge them and tell them, number one, don't be high-minded. In other words, just because you have more money don't make you more valuable. Let's try that one more time. I said, come on, just because your bank account's bigger don't make you more valuable than other people. Actually, the blood of Jesus was shed for everybody, rich and poor. Amen. So he says, Charge them. So deal with your attitude. If you have an abundance, come on, make sure. He said that you stay little in your own eyes. Don't be high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. Interesting, isn't it? Because sometimes, you know, it's interesting how many times Jesus spoke and addressed rich people. It's interesting. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and many times Jesus say, there was a certain rich man. Let's try that again. He'll go, there's a certain rich man. Then there's another rich man. Then there's this other rich man. Oh, we better not get into all that. But anyway, so now God's talking to the rich people again. Don't blame me. I didn't write the Bible. I'm just reporting. <laughs> I work for God, sorry. And I always say, if you run me out of town, I'll get out front and make it look like a parade. So God <laughs> talking to the rich people. And he says, don't be high-minded, nor be careful that you don't trust in uncertain riches. In other words, money is nice to have, but don't trust it. Even though you may have an abundance of money, he says, don't trust in uncertain riches, but in what? In the living God that does what? Gives us richly all things to enjoy. In other words, would you have faith in God much greater than just having some money? Actually, money makes a mighty poor God. So he says, be sure that you trust in the living God that gives us what? Richly all things to enjoy. Amen. Amen. And then go on next, verse 18, that they do good, that they are rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Look at the next verse, verse 19. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. In other words, he says that you're rich in good works, willing to distribute, or you could say it this way. One translation says, tell the rich people that they become extravagantly generous. I uh, thank you for I got three nods and a couple of grunts. All right, now let's get a good definition for rich. Because you're probably thinking, be sure that Donald Trump gets his message, you know, or <laughs> Bill Gates or somebody like that. But the real definition for rich is that if you make $40,000 or more a year, you're in the top 4% of the richest people in the world. Or you could say it this way, 96% of the people in the world consider you to be rich. All right, so don't be thinking of Trump right now. Look at the person next to you and say, he might be talking to you right now. <laughs> in other words, if you think you're not rich, I can take you to Papua New Guinea where I just came from, and they're going to say, oh, you rich. Y'all still with me? So, understanding who he's talking to here, really in America, we are extremely rich. Come on, if you don't believe it, you go to Vietnam, or you go to India, some of these other countries. So, he's talking to us, so don't put it off on somebody that makes more money than you. All right, well, let me try that again. I said, don't be putting this off on somebody else. You think, boy, I'm sure glad they're here, you know, or I wish so and so. I'm going to send them the message. Listen, why don't you just take the medicine yourself? All right. So he says, <laughs> charge those that are rich. So he's talking to us, right? And he says, be uh, willing to communicate, ready to distribute. Or one translation says, extravagantly generous. Extravagantly generous. Extravagantly generous. 
Amen. Now let's get a definition of extravagantly generous because we were just struggling with generous. <laughs> I wish y'all could see what I got to look at. So I said, we were struggling with generous. I know you said you're a frugal, but we know you're just stingy. Now listen, <laughs> it's okay to be frugal at Walmart, but you must be generous when it comes to the work of God and the gospel of Christ. Amen. 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 So what's a good definition for extravagantly generous? Well, I looked it up, you know, and I know that you could look it up, but it simply means to be excessive, excessively generous are unrestrained, unrestrained. <laughs> I call it extreme generosity. Yeah. You know, people love all these extreme sports, you know, yeah. right? And they like to jump off a mountain, you know, and have these little wings, you know, and they're flying off the side of a mountain. I said, no, nah, I don't think so. And so then they have all these things. They want to do extreme sports, you know, with the risk. I love the thrill, you know, flip a motorcycle. I said, that, that is not extreme. Now, if you really want to get some excitement, you give 50% of your income for the rest of your life. Man, that'll scare you really good. I'm talking about, man, that'll get... <laughs> I mean, you go, ah! There better be a God. We hope he can count. He does because he's got a book called Numbers. <laughs> Amen. And then going a step beyond your definition of generous and becoming extravagantly generous. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Galatians 6.10 says, As we therefore have opportunity... Let us do good unto all men, especially unto those that are of the household of faith. The good news is anyone can participate in God's generosity plan. We have to look for the opportunities he gives us to sow our seed. The generosity of a believer affects how they receive the word. When you give, it not only reflects your heart, it also affects your heart. In his book, How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity, Mark Hankins shares how your spiritual breakthrough may be just as connected to your giving as well as your praying. God will do things for you that money can't do when you're a generous giver. As a bonus, you'll also receive the four CD set, How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity. This teaching will help you understand how God wants everyone to reap the benefits of His plan for generosity. In this four CD set, Pastor Mark shares four powerful teachings, God's extravagant generosity, a whopper of a harvest, extreme giving, abundant living, and generosity the way to increase. Discover how with God, over and above giving will produce over and above living. Get the book and CD set today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers worldwide. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and become strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your love seat will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and serve as our new television studio. You will receive the book and the four CD set, How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity for your gift of any amount. You also can download these messages as MP3s in our app for free. For more information, please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Trust you enjoyed the program today. Of course, one of my favorite subjects in the Bible is simply generosity, or we also call it supernatural increase. Because sometimes people think, well, the Bible's just talking about people giving, but really the Lord said, I'm really talking about your receiving because he talks about sowing and he says, and your generous sowing 
will produce a generous harvest. Well, I was sure interested in that generous harvest. And so I began to study on generosity and giving and supernatural increase. And wow, the things that opened up from the word of God on the possibilities and the promises and even the word that God said that the generous soul shall be abundantly blessed. So I began to study generosity because a lot of times people think they're generous till they run into somebody's generous. Or you could say it this way, God's the most generous or the biggest giver. And actually the Lord said to me, he said, if you'll get addicted to giving, I'll support your habit. Or your sowing will outperform your saving. Or the Lord said to me, uh, I'll do things for you money could never do. There's something about generosity that just opens up the heart of God. God loves a generous, cheerful, happy giver. And there's something about that giving and sowing that God said, I'll multiply your seed zone. And most people are thinking subtraction and God's thinking and multiplication. So I encourage you to get this book. I'm telling you, it may, it may look a little bit funny at the beginning, God's extravagant generosity, but I'm telling you, there's something about it. I love the Proverbs 11, 24, the message Bible says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. And you get this, it'll tell you how to break certain barriers in your giving and your receiving and how to receive God's best blessing because there is no shortage to God's giving. Come on, sometimes we limit him and we're not able to receive what he has for us. And the Lord told me that one time and how to open up to receive. So if you'll just simply get this book and we'll go through, it'll teach you how to give, how to sow in expectation, how to get happy about your giving and how to see a harvest, a whopper of a harvest come in so that you'll be a testimony of the grace of God, that God will make all grace abound toward you. Wow, what a a promise that God will make all grace abound toward you. Have all sufficiency in all things abound to every good work. Look at this, God's extravagant generosity. So I encourage you to get the book. It'll teach you how to go up to a whole new level of receiving from God and also get the CDs or you can download them online. And I encourage you as you do this, your faith for finances, and you'll see supernatural increase, not through some sort of a gimmick, but simply feeding on the Word of God. So I encourage you to get this, and all week long we're talking about God's extravagant generosity. May God richly bless you. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.